First tonight, KXAN investigators have been digging into the wrongful death lawsuit against Williamson County. Javier Ambler's family is working with high profile attorney Ben Crump. He's represented the families of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Trayvon Martin. Now he's on the Ambler case. Ambler's arrest was recorded by the live by the TV show Live PD, but that video is now missing. Last month, the grand jury indicted Sheriff Robert Chody on a felony charge of tampering with evidence. New at 6, KXN investigator Jody Barr explains the sheriff's office policy at the heart of the lawsuit. Well, Sydney, first off, we searched this. It is the sheriff's office 560 page policy manual. The only time the word breathing shows up under prisoner restraints is where the handbook warns deputies about handcuffing people who are obese and who have a physical disability. Javier Ambler's attorney said today the sheriff's office ignored those factors and killed Ambler because of it. But Ambler is not the only, the county's only arrest under investigation involving a suspect who couldn't breathe. After it happened to Javier Ambler in March 2019, it happened again two months later to Ramsey Mitchell. This stop was broadcast across the country on live PD. Mitchell tried to run from this stop and deputies used force to get him in cuffs. That force included a chokehold from Deputy Mark Luera. I was able to get a carotid restrainer on his neck and was able to hold him, put him out for a second. So these guys were able to take him under, under control. He's still pretty uh, combative as you can see. The sheriff's office cleared deputies in the arrest of both men. But Ambler's attorneys say poorly trained deputies could not recognize the medical needs of a man whose disability could cause him to die in custody. Change. And that is one of the obvious situations. You know, sometimes it's better to be a 12 year old and ask a 12 year old the question what should you do if someone says they can't breathe and are obviously struggling? Should you A, continue to exercise force and make it worse for them, or B, help? The sheriff's office's prisoner restraint policy points out obesity and physical disability can increase difficulty breathing. Ambler's attorneys say deputies did not follow policy and the county did not hold them accountable. That behavior not only continues with that individual, but it also is, is it continues within the department, which creates the culture of impunity. So when you look at event after event after event, um, that's what what ratification is and that's what causes the bad behavior that's why the training is deficient now i asked sheriff chody if he has a policy about what his deputies are supposed to do when someone's telling them they can't breathe the sheriff never responded to that question or whether anything's changed since ambler's death i asked both the deputies involved in the ambler death for an interview neither would agree to talk with us about this lawsuit or what they did in those arrests. All right, Jody Barr for us. Thanks so much. Over the summer, Austin City Council voted to ban chokeholds. Austin police told us chokeholds and strangleholds, also known as vascular and carotid neck restraints, were already not a part of APD training or an approved tactic for restraining or arresting someone. APD agreed to update its policy to specifically ban it except in a deadly force situation.